down here getting the uh, game camera cards and uh, the creek is way up from all the rain from I think the last time we were down here from the last video like uh, these roots and stuff were all exposed above the water but they're kind of down now it must just be the rain but man it's way up today dogs are loving it though projects we started last year that we haven't finished and I know many of you have commented and have been excited to get back to it just like me uh, especially getting far far enough along to uh, get to the wind turbines which I know some people have been asking about uh, so I want to get the solar system finished so we can do the wind turbines um, when we first started on it as if, if you've watched that video series uh, we I went through all of the uh, electronics we bought and how we were going to implement it all we started wiring some of it um, at that point, we hadn't planned on getting this building up <clears throat> for another year or so, but things worked out great for us on timing and the cost of lumber timed out right where it was just worth getting the structure up now, uh, even though we haven't finished the interior. Um, so first we need to get a small cabinet built on the outside of the building to store all the electronics and stuff for the solar system. Uh, it will also be where all the wires will terminate and everything for power, uh, as well as we'll probably put all the uh, satel Starlink satellite stuff in there uh, eventually. So to do that, I need to construct that on the side of this building. Uh, the next thing will be to take all the hard work I did in this container, pull the electronics out of there, and uh, move it all to the new cabinet. And then lastly, we'll put all the new solar rails on, get the panels on, uh, and then I kind of haul all the batteries up. Uh, if you watched the video earlier on, you can see all the big um, <clears throat> batteries we bought. Uh, it's about 1,200 amp hours. Uh, we'll run it in about 600 amp hour mode, the, the way we're doing parallel and serial. So uh, we can bring all those up here. Once that's done, we can finally get to the wind turbines on, uh, up and running. So we're getting back to that project. Hooray, I'm excited. Uh, so kind of a rainy day today, but what I'm gonna start on today is I'm gonna get that cabinet going uh, so we can get that done. We will uh, build that on the side of the building, and then um, either if we get to it this week or next time, we will uh, start moving the electronics into it. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, on this side of the building, on the west side here, I'm actually going to put a probably a four by two and a half foot cabinet here on the outside. So uh, as you can see, this is the decking that was, or the deck that's already here that we have not put the top on. So uh, I will actually frame in part of this where the floor will be. I'm going to use some of the two inch rigid film insulation that we used on the building uh, in there to insulate that floor. I'm going to then put two by six decking on top of that so that it will raise the bottom of the cabinet up to the height of where the deck will be when we eventually put it in. Once that's done, it'll be just like building anything else. It'll be a uh, plywood subfloor down, stand up a couple small walls and then uh, put some doors on it. So I bought some parts, we'll have to make a door. Uh, actually found a use for two by three lumber, I think. I had a friend, James, who was pointing it out to me, like, hey, they make this two by three lumber, it looks kind of cool. And I was trying to think what the use of that was, um, other than it's cheap, I guess, or maybe it's a way for lumber companies to make more money. But actually, the more I looked at it, I was like, hey, it's great for a door for the front of this cabinet, because it's you know not two by four thick, but it'll be a little bit stronger. So we'll take a look at that and uh, hopefully build a door for it. So that's all gonna go right here. So let's get started on that. Thank you. 
Got some cross pieces in here uh, and added this additional piece here since the wall is going to be out just a little bit here. Uh, it won't sit right on the original uh, <coughs> truss here. So uh, these aren't really here to support a bunch of weight. These are really here to box in the rigid foam and kind of put an edge to the from underneath to the whole cabinet. So now I can just two by six the top plywood walls. So let's do doing that. Hi, doggy. This is the uh, rigid two inch foam that I was talking about. So uh, we use this to insulate the floor of the building. So we're gonna do the same thing out here. Uh, I have bigger sheets, we'll cut to size, but it'll just, goes in there, we'll cut it to size, wedge it in there. And then when you put the next layer on like the two by six, we actually drop some construction adhesive on the top of it to holds it up to the top of the, or to the bottom of the floor. Shiny side down. Got all the two by sixes cut, so now I'm gonna pull those back off, drop down some adhesive, construction adhesive on top of the rigid foam, and then put those on and nail them down, and that'll keep the foam glued straight up to the bottom. Got the uh, rigid foam insulation in, two by six is up, this brings the bottom up to the level of the deck. So now we just build it like we were building a cabinet. We can just put down the plywood, stand the walls up, build a door. Uh, keep the rigid foam out here because I'm gonna insulate the inside of the walls as well with it. So I do have a couple more sheets of that left over, but probably be enough in that one, we'll see. This cabinet I'm just gonna do in two by fours as well because we have a whole bunch of two by fours. We had at our house forever, so I brought those up here. And so we'll reuse those and not waste all the two by sixes we have and save those for other projects.
Well, uh, due to the crap weather this weekend, boy, it, yesterday we got a bunch of work done in the morning and then it just got, and you can probably hear the wind now on the camera, it got really windy and rainy and nasty. And on this side of the building where I was working on the solar stuff, man, the water was just sheeting in. And so I got tired of that and we went inside and worked on stuff, uh, ran down to the hardware store and picked up some stuff to work on the wood stove. So we figured, oh, we'll do some inside projects, which is kind of what we worked on um, yesterday. But uh, today it's, you know, it's not bad this morning. The rain isn't out, uh, but it is really cold. The wind is just, man, definitely early May in the Northwest. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is stop working on the solar stuff for now and, and the next trip up, we'll start working on that again. But, you know, as I showed you, we did get the base platform built for the cabinet. So that cabinet will go right here all the way up. Uh, once that's done, then we can just start moving all the equipment over and getting it ready to go. So hopefully that won't take more than, you know, a few hours worth of work. And I'll uh, share that with you as soon as I get that done. And really hoping to get it done this weekend, but that's how it goes. And, you know, the whole place is an experiment and fun. And, you know, we're not trying to hurry on anything, uh, but it would be nice to get the solar done. Right now we use a Jackery uh, solar pack, which works really awesome. Uh, so we don't have to run the generator very much. But that thing runs the lights and uh, we have one of those Dometic fridge cooler things that fits in the truck and we just bring that inside and plug it into the Jackery. So, you know, we certainly have all the things we need to be comfortable up here, but it'd be nice when we don't have to have all that extra stuff and everything's just self-contained. So slowly but surely. Uh, we started working on the wood stove install. I didn't get uh, any video of it, sorry, but I do have some photos I'll share with you uh, of this part that we're doing. Um, we didn't want to put down like tile or stone yet because we haven't decided how we're going to do all of the flooring. So what we did is we put down the dur rock, which is like that concrete board that you use in water areas and fireproofing, uh, down on the floor and on the back wall. Uh, this stove is laid out exactly to the specs from the uh, manufacturer as far as distances to burnable materials. Um, and it's shocking because this thing is like, they only require three inches on the back, which is seems really small to me. We've like read it a bunch of times. And then we've watched other videos online with people that have this stove and they're like, yeah, it's three inches. And so uh, we actually pulled it out four. Um, but with this dur rock back here and then eventually a tile or something, you'll have, uh, you know, the dur rock's half inch and then you'll have another quarter or half inch of tile, like totally fine. Uh, so what we did is we just temporarily set it on these stone blocks down here uh, that we picked up just to kind of have it sit there. So we are actually gonna hook the pipe up to this and get it through the roof. Uh, it's kind of a crappy rainy weekend, so I'm not gonna punch a hole through the roof while it's raining. Uh, but we are gonna build out this pipe, get the uh, kind of the hot box up there in the, in the trusses put in. And then as soon as we get a decent couple hours or one day or when there's no rain, I'll punch the hole through and we'll put the pipe in. That way this thing's completely usable and we're not tied to having to do the floor part right now. In the interim, we have the giant Dyna Glow Pro, which is a kerosene powered massive heater. It's, they use them to dry out buildings before they sheetrock them or while they're sheetrocking them, they put all the mud on and they power dry the buildings with them. And we had one of those uh, from a business we used to run and uh, it was sitting around. I was like, well, let's take that up there and uh, we just fire that thing up and it heats this building in minutes uh, and then just shut it off. So that's worked temporarily for now uh, on the chilly nights or chilly mornings. We'll definitely shoot some video when we put all the pipes in. Uh, like here's all the parts that came with it, the stove pipes and the flashings and pretty much everything we need to get that thing put in. So I will shoot some video of that when we go to do that and uh, share that with you guys when it's done. The other cool thing on this stove is that it has an intake on the back uh, for cold air or outside air. Um, so we're gonna connect something from that and punch it through either underneath the building or on the outside. Um, and it doesn't even have to be like heat resistant pipe because it's just air intake. But that pulls cold air in and there's an automatic um, damper system in it. So there's this little thermostat in there that controls that little damper and pulls the air, uh, you know, more or less depending on how well the, the burn is going. So when the stove gets really hot, it'll change the damper. Um, in a larger stove, you kind of have that a manual adjustment for that. Again, and it's not electronic, right? There's not like there's batteries or anything. It's completely mechanical. If you look up how uh, those mechanical spring-based thermostats work, you know, it heats up, metal expands or contracts, and that makes the spring turn. So it's pretty neat. So we'll give that a whirl. I've seen online, people have talked about it works pretty well. So it'll be interesting to see once we get it fired up.